Hello and welcome to a new video on cryptography for everybody. Today's topic is not about cryptography, it's about information theory. In this video, we will have a look at the Huffman encoding, which you can use to pack data, to compress data. And it's a very interesting algorithm. And in this video, I will first explain how the algorithm works. And then we will have a look in Crypt2.2 how you can use a component for the Huffman encoding. I structured this video into three different parts. In the first part, I will give you a short introduction to Huffman encoding. Then we will see how the Huffman algorithm actually works. And finally, we will do it in Crypt2.2. We will use a component and perform the Huffman algorithm in Crypt2.2. Huffman encoding was developed in 1952 by David Albert Huffman and published in A Method for the Construction of Minimum Redundancy Codes. You can see Huffman here on the right side. Huffman encoding is a kind of entropy encoding and is a prefix code. What does this mean? In information theory, entropy encoding is any lossless data compression method that attempts to approach the lower bound declared by Shannon source coding theory. And a prefix code is a type of code system distinguished by its possession of the prefix property, which requires that there is no whole code word in the system that is a prefix, that means an initial segment of our code word, of any other code word in the system. Interestingly, in 1951, Professor Robert M. Fainu supervised a student seminar which Huffman attended. And during this seminar, Huffman, at that time still a student, developed the Huffman code, which was more efficient than the code Claude Shannon, the inventor of modern information theory, and Professor Fano invented. The encoding they invented was a shannon fano coding. Let's have a look how the Huffman algorithm works. And we want to encode the text Cryptool is cool. If we would use a single byte for each of the 14 symbols, the 14 letters here, we would need 8 times 14 bits. A byte has 8 bit, as you know. So we would need 112 bit to encode Cryptool is cool when we would use ASCII encoding. Huffman encoding optimizes the number of needed bytes and bits since it uses a smaller number of bits for frequent symbols and a larger number of bits for less frequent symbols. To do so, we generate a binary tree based on frequencies of the symbols. A binary tree is a tree which nodes always connect to at most two other nodes. Let's encode Cryptool is cool using the Huffman algorithm to see how it actually works. To do so, we first make some space here, and then we have our text here, Cryptool is cool. The first step in the Huffman algorithm is to compute the frequencies of all symbols, or in this case, of all letters. So the C occurs two times, the R1, the Y1, the P1, the T1, the O is the most frequent letter, it has four occurrences, then we have the L two times, the I1 and the S1. So basically when we want to encode this, we should use less bits for O, less bits for C since these are more frequent and L, and more bits for the less, uh, for the less frequent letters like R, Y, P and so on. How do we proceed? We want to build a tree for the encoding. To do so, we take the two less frequent symbols and we combine these. These were S and I, both occur only once, and we connect these with another node of the tree, and in this node we write the sum of all nodes below this node. And we do this again with the next two less frequent symbols. These are T and P, they also occur only once each, and we connect these again in the node above these. Then we do the same with Y and R. We again write here a 2 and we connect these. And now it gets interesting because we have to connect now the nodes we already created or the nodes still here in the list of our 
symbols. And besides using or connecting the nodes with the smallest numbers, we have to also consider connecting the nodes or subtrees that are the smallest. So in this case, we connect the C and the L. And then, of course, the sum of 2 and 2 here is 4. In the next step, we have to connect also the two smallest subtrees. In our case, we have O equal 4. This is a tree with only one node. And then we have the trees or subtrees here with twos. So we connect our two subtrees here and we get four because these are two. Now it gets, it gets really interesting because we have here a four, here a four, and here a four, and here a two. So we have now to connect the two with the four since this is the smallest subtree here. Now we have 4, 6, and 4. We have to connect the two smallest numbers here. These are the two 4s. And we get a new tree with 8 here. And now we only have these two subtrees left here. So we connect 8 and 6. And we have created our binary tree. Now we have to assign bit values to the connections in our tree. We just write a 1 on each left side and a 0 on each right side. Now, how can we use this tree to encode Cryptool is cool. We first generate our code words. We generate our code words by going through the tree from the start of the tree to each symbol that we have. For instance, for the S, we have to go 1, 1, 1, and 1. For the I, we have to go 1, 1, 1, and 0. For the T, we have to go 1, 1, 0, 1, and so on and so forth. And our shortest code word is the code word for the letter O. And the O is a symbol that occurs most frequent in our text. And as I said in the beginning, we want to encode high frequency symbols with short code words and low frequency symbols like the S and I that only occur once with longer code words. How do we now encode Cryptool is cool using our table? We write our table on the left side. We don't need the tree anymore since we only needed the tree to generate our code words. And now we go through our text. We have here the C. We have a look at our table and we write 1, 0, 1. Then we have our R. This is 0, 1, 0. Our Y, 0, 1, 1. And so on and so forth. Here you can see the O. Only two bits. O again, two bits. And this is how we encode our text using the Huffman encoding. Here I ordered our symbols by the frequency. And as you can see, high frequency symbols are on the top and the less frequency symbols are on the bottom. So the O occurred four times and we used the shortest code word for the O and T, P occurred only once. So we use longer code words for these. In total, we used 42 bits for encoding Cryptool is cool using the Heffman algorithm. And if we would have used pure ASCII, so 8 bits per letter, we would have needed 112 bit to encode the text. This is a ratio of about 42 divided by 112. This is 37.5%, so a really good compression rate. I write here without header, since if we want to send this text to a receiver, he or she has to know how to decode the data. And to do so, he would need the tree, so we would have to send additional data in a header that defines our tree. If the receiver needs or wants to decode our data, the tree is needed. How would he decode the data? He would go through the tree, starting with the first node, following until he reaches a leaf. So he would go left, right, left, and then he sees, okay, this is a C, then right, left, right in the tree, this is an R. Le right, left, left, this is a Y, and so on and so forth. This is how the Huffman algorithm works.
Now that we know how the Huffman algorithm works, let's use the Huffman encoder component of Crypto2 to compress and decompress data. I'm here now in Crypto2 and I want to show you the Huffman encoder component that we have in Crypto2. And to do so today, I just search for Huffman encoding. And we have here Huffman's algorithm for ASCII, for images and for text with UTF-8. So text ASCII, text UTF-8. Let's open the ASCII example. What can we see here? We can see that we have a text here, uncompressed text. This text is converted to bytes. Then we have one Huffman component that encodes our text or compresses our text. Then we have a second Huffman component that will decompress our text. And then the byte array that comes out of the Huffman component will be converted back to ASCII. Let's see how this works. When we press play, you can see that the uncompressed size here of our text is 100,000 bytes. The compressed size using the Huffman algorithm is only 54,000 bytes. So we have a compression rate of 45%. In the component, you can see the occurrences or the frequencies of each letter and the code words that the Huffman component generated. So the most frequent symbol is a space symbol here that occurs 16,000 times, and this gets the code word 110. As we know with English language, the E is the most frequent letter, and here in this case it's also the most frequent symbol, and this therefore gets the second shortest, shortest code word. It occurs 10,000 times and gets the code word 001. The A is the next most frequent letter here, and this also gets a code word of length 4. And you can see all the different code words for all the letters. And as we can see, the uppercase C here is the less frequent letter that we have here. And this gets the longest code word. This is even longer than 8-bit. The decompression component then takes the data that comes out of our Huffman encoding component and it decompresses the data again. It's converted to the ASCII string and you can see here that the text is the same as the one that is posted here. What can we do with the component? We can change the action from compress to decompress. We can choose the presentation format, text and binary. And we can change the input encoding from ASCII to UTF-8 and so on. Why does this component have two inputs and two outputs? The first input and output here, here's the output and here's the input, is the actual data. The second one is the header. This is actually the definition of the Huffman tree. And this is also needed for the decompression here. Yeah, and this is everything I wanted to show you in this short video. You now know how the Huffman algorithm works and how you can create your own Huffman tree. And you can now use Crypto2 to use the Huffman component to compress and uncompress data on your own. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked the video. If yes, please give a thumbs up. This really helps us to grow the channel and make Crypto2 more popular. Also, if you want to be notified when I upload new videos, hit the bell icon. So thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.